Systems Analysis by Dr. Catherine P. Fulford, University of Hawaii at Manoa. Front-end analysis is what you do as an instructional designer before you make purchases or design or develop instruction. It helps you determine the real problem so that the solutions you choose solve the problem. It starts with systems analysis, that is, developing charts and descriptions of the system, doing a change analysis, determining what can be changed, and how you'll go about disseminating and diffusing your project, and needs assessment, making sure you know exactly what problem you're trying to solve. Systems thinking. Design is not just about the stuff and things. It's all about the human beings. We learn from technology, we use it to communicate, and we use it to work. But this involves people, individuals, groups of people, as well as entire systems. Instructional design is client-oriented. A lot of times we think of our client as the boss who hires us. However, there's an even more important client. Our primary client is not that boss, but it's our learners that are important in our design. Instructional design is systems oriented as well. What that means is that you have the system that surrounds the learning, or as well as the entire super system, which impacts the instruction and the learners. Environmental scanning is very similar to systems analysis. You can see in this diagram that you have situational dimensions, organizational strategies, and managerial traits when it comes to environmental scanning. Different situations call for different amounts of scanning, and different organizational strategies will provide you with different ways and the scope of the scanning. In terms of management, a lot of environmental scanning is a management choice and this will depend on your information needs, how you're going to go about seeking your information, and what you plan to use it for. Well, where did systems theory come from? It was first proposed in the 1940s. A biologist in 1968 developed general systems theory. It was furthered in the introduction to cybernetics in 1956. Systems theory proposes that systems, human or non-human, are interconnected and that you cannot understand something without understanding first what surrounds it. You can't change one thing without affecting the whole. Here's an example. In a biological system, such as the human body, we might treat high blood pressure with medication, but if we don't change what causes it, it may not do any good. You might take away salt, which may affect the thyroid because of the removal of iodine. Here's another example, one that happened to me. I was in a system in a school, a university. We had some money to buy some scheduling software, and we thought it was going to help fix our problem of meetings. The problem is that adding the software added to the task of professors who are already overwhelmed. So we created more problems and didn't end up fixing any. A systems approach. However complex or diverse the world, we will always find different types of organizations. So such organizations can be described by concepts and principles that are independent from the specific domain or type of organization. With general laws, we're able to analyze and solve problems in any domain pertaining to any type of system. The following is a step-by-step -step scientific methodology to ensure that innovations are successful. Examining how and why people, organizations, and things interact the way they do. Determining the solutions that create positive change rather than creating negative consequences. Let's start with some important terms for doing a systems analysis. First is our subsystem. These are aspects of the learner's lives that impact their ability to learn, such as personal attributes, home life, peers, transportation, etc. Next is our system. This is the environment in which the learning takes place. People, materials, equipment, facilities, budgets, etc. Next is our super system. These are things that impact the operation of the system. Other groups, policies, media, society, etc. 
It's also important to use communication lines. This is how effective the communication and through what interface or method is used. You can have thin two-way lines, or you may have broken lines for less communication, or even one-way, very thin lines to show that there's not much communication and usually only one way. Why should we draw a system rather than just describe it? This is so we can apply both modes of thinking, both intuitive and logical. We draw to see the relationships between the components. We write to describe the details of those relationships and make suggestions as to what might be working or not working. And then it's good to verbally explain the chart to someone to help complete the loop, to make sure that you understand what you have just drawn and described. System charts are different from organizational charts. For example, organizational charts show the ideal line of authority from the top down, whereas systems charts show the human and non-human components of the system. System charts show the actual effectiveness of the communication and links between components. Now I'm going to show you some examples of systems analysis. This is an organizational chart. Notice its top-down hierarchical nature. Notice there are no arrows, so it doesn't really tell you which direction it flows. This is not a systems analysis. Here is a systems analysis example of a K-12 professional development system. At the top, you have the state level. Next, you have the district level. And last, you have the school level. Notice the different kind of arrows that show you the direction of the communication. Now we have the parts we talked about earlier. Here is your super system. If you notice, some of these arrows are only one way. That implies that there is little, if any, feedback from the Department of Education to the federal government. Look at this one. You see the university system has a very weak line of impact or communication. Now here is our subsystem, who is the teacher, as well as our system. So with the Department of Education, you have personal impacts on the teachers, the family, professional development, friends, and intrinsic factors. And on the school level, you have administration, facilities and equipment, students, parents, other teachers, grade level, department chair, and a teacher's union. Notice that some of these, the non-human aspects, are only one way. Next is a dental office. This is the subsystem, and our dental patient is the learner. I like what they've done with the intrinsic factors. They've put all of them here that impact the patient's ability to learn about what is good for their dental health. I especially liked this component, the media. It was explained in their write-up that the media could have a large impact on how dental patients perceived their care. For example, a toothpaste commercial might have them putting lots and lots of toothpaste on their brush when it's really not necessary. And of course, these days, the internet has a large impact on all of our health care. At the system level, you can see the various components, with the most important being the dentist and hygienist. Interestingly, the dental patient has a lot less communication with the dentist than they do with the hygienist in this particular office. At our super system level, we have professional organizations, regulatory agencies, insurance companies, and a state licensure division. These are all important to the operations of the dental office system. Our next system is interesting because it involves a website. The problem is, when you look at the system page, yikes, there are no people. Remember, people are always an important part of the system. So ask yourself, who are the techies? Where are the marketing folks? Where are the designers? These are the things that need to be spelled out. Even though it's okay to have this as a part of your analysis, it's important that you include the humans as well. Here is our subsystem, the K-12 teachers. Those are certainly people. You notice they've got both internal as well as external control factors. Computer literacy, time, attitude about technology, teaching philosophy, and for external control, their job position, tech support, access to technology, and professional development. You can see that there's no one way to talk about these factors. 
Now in our super system, you might notice that we have our Department of Education at the top and we have very thin lines to our EOHANA project as well as to our project partners. This spells disaster for a project and of course the people involved in the project really need to do something about those communication lines to make sure that the project runs well. This is also interesting, is making sure that you have the internet, because the internet is going to influence a lot of what's done on a website, both the style as well as how it's marketed. Next we have a systems analysis that doesn't exist as a single organization. It's a system across numerous organizations. What it entails is an island called Moku, which is an alias for the real place. It involves ecotourists and their impact on the flora and fauna of the system. At the system level, we have our nature-based nonprofits, our travel agents in the home country, our nature-based tour operators. And in our subsystem, we have the ecotourist in the center, of course impacted by media, as well as their work, knowledge of the environment, their eco-tour experience, their family and friends, which they have two-way communication. And with the system, the greatest communication will be with their own travel agent and their own nature-based tour operator that they've chosen. Now we also have the super system that's going to impact all of this, but let's break down the system first. Okay, here we have the travel agent in the home country who works with the travel agent on Moku. This person also works with the nature-based nonprofits and the nature-based tour operators. Here is a good example of really looking at your system to see where you might place impact. If you're building an important system like helping save the environment, you might work with ground transportation, airlines, hotels, and restaurants to distribute information on the safe use of the environment for hikers, boaters, people who interact with sea life and other important areas of the environment. Now you might be asking yourself, huh, who uses a travel agent anymore? There are a few people that do, but largely this has gone away. So it's important to think about your system in the here and now, what's happening at the moment, and see if you can determine what kind of communication and what kind of components you have. Now the super system starts with this Moku Tourism Authority and also works with the Department of Business and Tourism as well as the state government. We also have people outside of the super system, the global politics, the federal government, as well as the global economy. So when you're analyzing, remember that design is not all about the stuff and things. It's all about the human beings, individuals, groups, and systems. Here are some references so that you can study more.